Um, this is logged in on November 25th, 2023, Eastern Standard Time. Um, sensitive material has been breached and it is now in front of the public. This is very sensitive documentation and the world will be in total chaos if leaked and it is now leaked. All of it. Not one document, all of it. Place of exploitation, forbidden knowledge, television. This must be stopped. Hey, hey, what's up, what's up? It's Billy Carson, AKA Forbidden Knowledge. Listen, we have an amazing special event coming up, and that is the second annual Forbidden Conscious Awards. You don't wanna miss out. I'm talking over here to you guys too, over here in TikTok land. You're behind the scenes on the Forbidden Knowledge podcast, all right? I wanted to bring you guys in to have some spend some time with you and have you check out the behind the scenes action at the Forbidden Knowledge podcast. So listen, tonight we're talking about a very sensitive topic. Tonight we're talking about geoengineering and I'm going to ask a question. I will preface this video by starting with that question. Is geoengineering responsible for the destruction of Dubai? I'm asking you a question. You see, by asking that question, they can't delete my video <laughs> because I'm not making a statement. I'm literally, literally asking. Tonight, we're going to do some research together and we're going to read some articles from mainstream sources, approved sources by these platforms that they themselves can look up. And I'm going to put the links to those sources in the caption of this video because you got to have the receipts. OK, I got my little rice snacks here. I've been trying to cut some weight. I want to cut about five more pounds and uh, a nice cup of joe. But anyway, it's going to be a great talk tonight. Make sure you guys click the like button and make sure you share this video, okay? Click the like button and share the video. I'm going to check out the live chat. What's going on? I see people hopping in here. We only got 691 people right now. Let's go ahead and click that like button, all right? And make sure we get this video to everyone. People have been questioning for a long time. What is geoengineering, right? We're talking about those trails that happen in the sky. You know what kind I'm talking about. But are they real or is it just a conspiracy? I don't know. I'm asking a question again. <laughs> I'm just asking questions. Well, we're going to read some information tonight that's going to give you an idea as to what they are or what they aren't. Again, you'll be free to make your own educated decision based on what we find out tonight. OK, so that's what we're going to do. Guys, make sure you click the like button. Make sure you share the video. Make sure you click that notification bell. All right. And while you're doing that, I want you guys to take a quick peep. Just a quick, quick, quick look at my new TV series trailer. My new series. I'm going to show it up here, for guys, on YouTube right now. My trailer for Anunnaki Ancient Secrets Revealed. It's my brand new TV series that's going to be airing at Regal IMAX Cinemas throughout the United States. I'll be coming on tour to a city near you. I'll, I will lecture for an hour. And then we will watch the live premiere together on the IMAX screen. And then afterwards, we'll have a question and answer session. All right. Take photos, hang out, all that kind of good stuff. And if you want to be involved in that, if you want to meet me at the Regal IMAX Cinema, well, I'm going to drop a link in the live chat before we get on this talk. But here, watch this trailer real quick. My new TV series, Anunnaki Ancient Secrets Revealed. In an era shrouded in the midst of time, within the vast expanse of an uncharted cosmos, emerged the genesis of humankind. How did the odyssey of humanity begin? What secrets lie within our primordial roots? 
As I began to research ancient cultures, I discovered something quite interesting. Most of these ancient cultures all believe that life originated in the Pleiades. When you look at the indigenous North Americans, the Mayans, the aboriginal tribes of Australia, the Egyptians, and even the Japanese, they all claim that they were seated on this planet by people from the Pleiades. How can people separated by so many thousands of miles in different continents have the same exact story? There must be some fact rooted in the myth. This is the saga of the Anunnaki and their ancient secrets revealed. Anunnaki Ancient Secrets Revealed. That's going to be an amazing series with unlimited seasons. And I'll be teaching you all about the Anunnaki. I'm doing something that nobody's ever done. I'm going all the way back to the very, very, very beginning. Okay. I'm going back millions of years to the beginning, the origins of the Anunnaki, the origins. All right. And so here's the link to the uh, Anunnaki. I'm going to drop it in the live chat. It's also in my bio. If you want to get tickets to come to a Regal Cinema at a city that I'll be in, make sure you click the link in my bio. All right. And uh, come hang out with me at the Regal Cinema. I just dropped the link in the live chat. And I will add that link to the caption of this video as well for anyone who wants to do that. I know you're kind of looking at me saying, where, where is he sitting? What is he doing? Well, I'm sitting in my home studio, and behind me is the uh, is my screen. I have a new LED screen behind me. This LED screen will allow me to play any image that I want to put behind me. So today I chose to put behind me the venue for our second annual Forbidden Conscious Awards. This is the inside of the Adrian Arts Center, where we had our first annual award show last year. We had 1,200 people there. This year, we'll have about 1,800 people, okay? It's a beautiful venue, one of the most incredible and most beautiful venues in the world. So if you want to come down to the Forbidden Conscious Awards and listen to us give out awards to people and cheer for people's success and the effort that they put forth to help humanity while they're still alive, you have to come down there to the Forbidden Conscious Awards, all right? You have to come on down. The categories, real quick, before I get into the talk, I just want to give you the categories. You can vote for people that you want, okay? You can always vote. You can go to ForbiddenKnowledge.com with the number four, and you can vote. But the categories are podcast host, space anomaly hunter, television host, social media influencer, spiritual leaders, philanthropists, music, director, producer, health and wellness, entrepreneur, author, and archaeologist. And we've also added two additional awards. One award is the Disclosure for Humanity Award. And the second, the last and final, the biggest award of the night is actually the Lifetime Achievement Award. Last year, Dr. Daniel Amen of Amen Clinics won the Lifetime Achievement Award for his work that he's done in the field of psychiatry and human brains where he doesn't take the route of giving prescriptions and medication to somebody right off the top. He is one of the very first psychiatrists to decide to look at the human brain and scan each individual patient to discover exactly and precisely what is physically going on inside their brain and then put together a regimen, uh, his own prescription of activities and supplements, natural supplements to help heal their own brain without pharmaceuticals. He has the entire NFL contract now. He does the entire NFL, the National Football League. When they get concussions, they send the concussions to him. All right. So shout out to Dr. Daniel Amen. He did, has done a phenomenal job. He even helped me with my brain injury that I had when I had a car accident a long time ago. Uh, he's just an incredible human being. And shout, shout out to him and his beautiful wife. I believe his wife is actually nominated this year in health and wellness. All right. So anyway, again, if you want to come to the Forbidden Conscious Awards and sit here in this amazing venue where I'm, you know, per perched in front of right now, I'll be on the stage way back there, but it's going to be a beautiful, beautiful night. All right. OK, let's get to the topic at hand. Again, I'm asking you a question, guys. Is 
geoengineering responsible for the destruction of Dubai. A lot of people are asking, well, what's going on in Dubai? Well, there's a lot going on in Dubai, unfortunately. Um, Dubai is a desert, okay? If you didn't know, Dubai is an actual desert. They get about three inches of rainfall, maybe, maybe three inches for the year, okay? But they got multiples of that in one day, just the other day. And that created some significant flooding, significant, significant flooding. Let me, uh, let me see if I can pull up uh, a couple of clips that I do have for you here. Check this out. This is Dubai. Right now, today, this is Dubai, okay? And you can see this is really, really bad. Now, I've been to Dubai and walked these streets and spent some time in Dubai. And this is definitely not normal for a desert. It's not normal at all, okay? I mean, if, you, if you're wondering what I'm showing, guys, on TikTok, I'm showing some video clips of the devastation going on in Dubai. I'm showing huge tidal waves crashing down over the city, animals suffering and stranded, camels in the middle of the desert going against torrential rains and floods, getting drowned. It's just wild, just wild, right? How can this possibly happen in a desert? Well. We don't know, but we, what we can do is we can research. So today I'm going to look up some articles and we're going to read some of these articles. You'll read along with me. I'm going to share my screen. If you want to read these articles with me, guys, I'm over on YouTube on the Forbidden Knowledge YouTube account. I'm going to read these articles. All right. So let's, let's go into some of these articles and just start reading. Let's do some research tonight. Like I said, it's got to be done in a specific way, or you already know what's going to happen to this video. See, I, I know the loopholes. I understand how to get through the loopholes, how to follow the breadcrumbs, all right? So let me see if I can find the exact article I want to get to. All right. And we're going to hear both sides of the coin as we read this. Now, First thing I want to pull up, okay, I found one I want to start with here. We're going to talk about geoengineering a little bit first. Let me bring us up to speed on what that is, all right? And um, uh, let me just make sure I got this thing shared to where I want it. Okay, that's there. And let me share my screen. Hold on, guys. I got to look behind this camera here because I have this huge camera now that I have to, I'm waiting for the other one to get delivered, but it didn't get delivered yet. Okay, share screen. All right, now, all right, let's take a look at this. And we'll read this together. So I'm reading, what is geoengineering? You have solar geoengineering, all right? And so we're on geoengineering.environment.harvard.edu. So again, I'm bringing you the, the receipts. Again, this video, can't be taken down because I'm bringing you the sources. Geoengineering.environment.harvard.edu forward slash geoengineering. It says solar geoengineering. There are several proposed solar ge geoengineering technologies. These include marine cloud brightening, cirrus cloud thinning, space-based techniques, and stratospheric aerosol scattering. See how these fancy names they give you? <laughs> stratospheric aerosol scattering. Yeah, it's not, it's not the trails, you know, the, you know, the trails I'm talking about. It's not the trails. It's, <laughs> it's stratospheric aerosol scattering is what they're calling it. The average person, they, they, they can't even pronounce the word. So they figure, you know, they'll, this will go right over their heads amongst others. Notice they just say amongst, like they won't even tell you all the different types they have going on. Cirrus cloud thinning would attempt to reduce the thin high altitude cirrus clouds to emit more long wave radiation from Earth into space. That's a real fancy way of saying what they're doing is they're putting particulates in the upper atmosphere and reflecting the sunlight back into space. I mean, come on, that's all they had to say, but you know, they have to get fancy so that they can make it seem so difficult to understand the average person, whew, 
just goes right over their head. They're like, whatever, you know. Lastly, stratospheric aerosol scattering would introduce tiny reflective particles such as sulfate aerosols, sulfate aerosols, or perhaps calcium carbonate into the upper atmosphere where they could scatter a small fraction of sunlight back into space. This is what they're doing to the planet. And um, I remember when I first started talking about this topic about maybe eight years ago, everyone said I was a tinfoil wearing hat uh, pseudoscientist and that I was a, uh, what else did they call me? A conspiracy theorist and blah, 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 blah. Now, we're on Harvard's website reading exactly what these things are that there you see coming out the backs of these planes, right? When they're flying high above in high altitude, they're doing stratospheric aerosol scattering. Okay, say that fast 10 times. <laughs> so they say the solar geoengineering benefits and risks. Climate models have consistently shown that solar ge geoengineering, when used in moderation, and combined with emission cuts has the potential to reduce climate changes around the globe. The potential. It has the potential. It didn't say that it will. It's not guaranteed. It's not 1,000% this is going to happen. It says the potential. Well, we live in a universe full of potentials. Every outcome exists at the same time, all right? All we do is collapse potentials into one reality every single moment by moment. So it's no particular future outcome is 1,000% guaranteed. But they have it here. They, they spelled it out very clearly. The word potential. What's interesting is when you look up, you know, things like sulfate aerosols, and then you just Google that and you look up side effects to humans. That's all you have to do. You, come, you can come to your own conclusions once you look up sulfate aerosols, side effects to humans, okay? And you may find some things that you might not be on the same frequency with, let's just say that way. <laughs> also, solar geoengineering does not address ocean acidification Every year, the ocean absorbs about one quarter of the carbon dioxide we emit into the atmosphere, changing the chemistry of the oceans and harming marine ecosystems. Given that solar geoengineering would not remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere directly, but rather reflect sunlight back into space, it could do little to address this serious problem except via carbon cycle feedbacks. So now they're talking about the fact that the ocean is absorbing a lot of our carbon emissions and that the geoengineering has no effect on how damaging our, our carbon, our, our carbon uh, emissions are to the oceans, okay? Just to clarify that for you. All right, so now, now you have an idea. You should have a good understanding, right, of what geoengineering is based on Harvard, on the harvard.edu website, okay? So, Yes, Prince did know, by the way. Shout out to Martin Gillette. I posted Prince's videos talking about this topic. Prince, the music artist who passed away. I posted him on my Forbidden Knowledge account all the way back in 2014, talking about this very topic. Um, you know, but anyway, that's a whole nother podcast, right? Maybe I'll pull those clips up and save them again and repost them. I should have really thought about trying to track those down tonight, but scrolling back to 2014 on Instagram is painful. You know what I'm saying? Very, very, very painful. All right, so we got that one down, right? Let's see the next one that we're gonna cover tonight as we're breaking this down, okay? Because I'm taking you to the sources. Because if I don't take you to the sources with the receipts, this video will be doomed, and you already know that. So you gotta take, them, take you to the sources with the receipts. Okay, let's look at an article by transparency.org. And I'm going to pull this down now. Climate geoengineering technologies, corruptions, and integrity gaps. Let's pull this on down here. Okay, let's take a peep over here at what this has to say. Let me get back to my uh, screen sharing again. 
And boom. And let me bring up the next receipt for you guys. All right. All right, where is that? Here we go. Boom. All right. So now, let me shrink this a little bit so I can see the live chat while I'm reading. We are on transparency.org. All right. A subsidiary of Transparency International. Climate Geoengineering Technologies, semicolon, or colon, Corruption and Integrity Gaps. Let's get down to, so away from some of this jargon. And let me get to the, the, the meat of the, of the article. Can geoengineering technologies address climate change effectively? They're asking a question. Can geoengineering technologies address climate change effectively? The IPCC's addressed emission reduction pathways to limit global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius with limited or no overshoot project the use of carbon dioxide removal, which is also called CDR, on the order of 100 to 1,000 GT CO2s over the 21st century. They do not, however, include SRM within the IPCC Nothing that, although some SRM measures may be theoretically effective in reducing an overshoot, they face large uncertainties and knowledge gaps. So this study and this information coming from these scientists and researchers is saying there, is some, there are some issues with the science behind what they're trying to accomplish. Billy Carson didn't say this, okay? I didn't say this. They are saying this. These are scientists and researchers in the field of geoengineering, uh, also in, um, in, in corporations and in politics, talking about the fact that there's a situation here where there's a gap in the knowledge. There's a gap. Among CDR technologies, bioenergy with carbon capture and storage and direct air carbon capture and storage are the most cited in the literature for SRM marine cloud brightening and stratospheric aerosol injection, which we just learned about, are usually seen as the most two important technologies. Geoengineering proponents suggest that CDR and SRM technologies can be solutions to climate change, including the last, in, included in the last report. They have links to the reports here on transparency.org. However, if deployed at large scale, CDR and SRM technologies are likely to come with far-reaching and profound social, political, and environmental risks and impacts. The effects would, by nature of this intervention, be transboundary as well as potentially large-scale, unpredictable, and irreversible. For example, according to the IPCC, most current and potential uh, CDR measures could have significant impacts on land, energy, water, or nutrients if deployed at large scale. Afforestation and bioenergy may compete with other land uses and may have significant impacts on agricultural and food systems, biodiversity, and other ecosystem functions and services. Hmm. Interesting. I didn't say this. They said this. <laughs> See, it's not, it's not the crazy conspiracy Billy saying this now. It's not the crazy conspiracy theorist with the tinfoil hat saying this. The link is right there, transparency.org. Furthermore, geoengineering could have significant levels of uncertainty and risk with respect to its impact on the global climate system, natural ecosystems, weather patterns, weather patterns. What's the topic for tonight? Dubai, weather patterns, biodiversity, economic sustainability, and other considerations such as human rights, human rights, human rights. The possible risk and impacts carry significant uncertainties and have governance and ethical implications. Regulatory or governance regimes would be needed to assess such impacts and risk, identify uncertainties, and put in place the required regulations 
to ensure transparency and address possible corruption risk avenues. In other words, the money that can be made doing this. You see, if I have an airplane, I can go right now online and Google for an application or a contract to become a geoengineering person. I can actually go and get paid like the ones in Dubai. They were paid $3,000 per flight to see clouds. That's, you can look that up. It's even on Wikipedia. Not that Wikipedia has all the truth, but they give you the source link to their material where they got that information. And it's a fact. They get paid $3,000 to seed clouds per day. So if I want to make myself 3K per day, I mean, $3,000 a day is good money, right? That's over $1 million a year if I did it every single day. I'd make a million a year, that 3,000 a day. Good money. I'm not, I don't care what's in these canisters. <laughs> Just give it to me. I'm going to go ahead and throw them out there. See what happens. Give me my check. Send my money. You'll find that in a study that was done, which is available online, they include silver oxide, sorry, silver iodide. Silver iodide is a chemical compound used in medical and industrial settings. Exposure to large amounts of silver iodide can cause the various symptoms. So if you're suffering from some of these symptoms, you might want to scratch your head and look up in the sky. Nausea. Vomiting, diarrhea, skin irritation, eye irritation, respiratory problems, and headaches. Nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, skin irritation, eye irritation, respiratory problems, and headaches. Silver iodide. Why do they use silver iodide? Because when you take silver iodide, frozen silver iodide, and put it in the upper atmosphere, it begins to collect more ice. It's like attracts more ice. And then it makes the clouds heavy. And then the ice melts. In some cases, it turns into hail or rain. But it also increases incredible weather patterns when they begin to do the seeding. And what they do is they take drones and send drones up there and they electrify these clouds. So now you have an enormous amount of static electricity. Now you're creating an electromagnetic field, which then can create things like tornadoes and other situations, you see, like the big tornado that just happened to hit Dubai. Let me show you that tornado real quick. This is the actual tornado. It's an actual image, CBS News image. This is an actual CBS News image of a freaking tornado in the desert. If you guys can't see it, I know you're on TikTok, so I'm on YouTube showing some stuff. All right. So what's going on? What's really going on here? What's going on is there's a financial opportunity, unfortunately. Cap, you know, I'm a capitalist. I mean, I, I make money because I have to. I'm in the... I, I can't ignore the fact that we're living in the financial matrix. Anyone who thinks that you can avoid the financial matrix and live completely zero dollar free and have to worry about no money is kind of fooling themselves right now. OK. At the same time, we have to ask ourselves a question about capitalism. In in certain areas of life in business. Is capitalism a tragedy? Is capitalism a travesty? And I would like to say, yeah. I don't think you can have capitalism in every field of business or government because it pulls on the ego and it pulls on the power-hungry mindset of individuals. It pulls on the greed of individuals. It, it extracts the greed directly from their soul. And so when you have a capitalistic society, which I'm for in this current financial matrix that we're in until it ends, you have to ask questions about what areas there should be no capitalism allowed. Like there shouldn't be any capitalism in the medical industry. 
None. Now, maybe in certain areas of medical, like cosmetics, if somebody wants to have cosmetic surgery, maybe somebody was in an accident that scarred their face and they need to have cosmetic surgery. It's not, they're not going to die if they don't get it, but they decided, you know what, I want to fix this scar on my face or whatever it is. Then they can go pay for that kind of surgery. But things like keeping people alive, fighting cancer and diabetes and other viruses and illnesses, kidney transplants and heart transplants and all these things, take out the capitalism. That's my personal opinion. I don't think it deserves to be there. Prison systems. You have prison systems that are capitalizing on people going to prison. If you're in a society, your main goal in that society should be to have as few people in prison as possible. To have as few people in prison as possible. Not have the most people in prison. America has the most people locked up per capita in the world. The land of the free is it, is it locked up. <laughs> we're, we're, we're locked up, man. Come on. What are we doing? The goal should be rehabilitation. And for those who can't be rehabilitated, they have a permanent home. I'm okay with that. They have a permanent home behind bars. However, our goal shouldn't be forcing people into prisons for the almighty dollar. Now that is evil. And what do we have? We have hundreds of private prisons all throughout the Americas. And those private prisons are making billions of dollars. That should be illegal. That's modern day slave labor. And if you look at the American prison system, just look at us. I don't know about the rest of the world, but I know our statistics. 40% of the people locked up in American prisons are locked up on victimless crimes. They didn't even hurt anybody but themselves. Hell, probably a third of those people were caught with weed, a pouch of weed in their pocket for personal use. And now everyone's selling weed. Even politicians are selling weed. But the people that were locked up years ago for selling weed or having weed on them are still locked up. Never took them out. You know why? Because of capitalism. They're making money off of these people's heads every single day. The phone system, the clothing, the bedding, the meals, the whatever medicine they have to have, the security they have to have. They have to have security in, in, in a lockup. Yeah, they have them. Corrections agent. I call them agents. Corrections uh, agents, officers, right? They're making money hand over fist on these people, and they get money from the government every single day on top of what they're cleaning up in the private money. You can't put capitalism in everything. You can't have capitalism involved in geoengineering. You can't do that. It's not a good idea. Because when I looked up the geoengineering contracts, a private corporation can sign up to be a geoengineering company. And they get money for this. And I'm talking about a lot of money. Look it up. Don't believe what I say. Research what I say. So I can create a private corporation and get and secure myself geoengineering contracts. And without question, without asking any questions whatsoever about what this stuff can do, or what it won't do, and what the side effects will be or won't be, I can dump this stuff in the sky and I can get paid. See, TikTok doesn't like my conversation. They just restricted my video on TikTok. They just restricted my video on the left. They said, this is not appropriate for younger individuals. <laughs> they just popped up on my screen over there. Nobody wants the, this information to get out. Nobody wants this to be talked about. Nobody wants this information to be talked about on a consistent basis. 
Today, Facebook on my personal Facebook account restricted my Facebook account because I posted that I'll be talking about this tonight. They restricted it, took away my ability to go live, restricted my views. And then once I appealed that, they came back and hit me on the same post and said, this post is a, a, a copyright violation. How in the world can the image of a, of, a, of a storm over a city and my statement is geoengineering responsible for the destruction of Dubai. How can that be a copyright? That's not a copyright. That's content. That's a, an image that I created on my phone, on my own, on my own device. Nobody else has that image. It doesn't exist anywhere except for in my device. And now I uploaded it to as a thumbnail on YouTube and I didn't put it up on TikTok. But nobody wants this talk, topic to come out. They want to talk about this. This guy's talking about how we make money with this stuff. We got to stop it. You see? <laughs> Crazy. Crazy. So there's no way in the world that a private corporation should be able to go and get a geoengineering contract and make money as a private corporation. This stuff needs to be regulated highly if it's going to happen. It needs to be restricted. There needs to be a full-on verification process. There needs to be a whole lot going on before somebody can just go down the street, buy a plane, get a contract approved, and take it into the sky and dump stuff on you. Yet, yeah, you can get a, you can make a lot of money if you do this. You can go and get a contract to do this. And it's not that hard. I posted a geoengineering application on F Facebook probably in 2016 or 2017, Forbidden Knowledge, to show people, yeah, this is real. This is not a conspiracy anymore. You can go and get this job. You can go and get this contract to be your own, your own geoengineering, um, uh, you know, fly boy, if you want to call it that. <laughs> okay. They even have cannons that shoot these particulates up into the sky. Okay. They have cannons and these cannons actually shoot up silver iodide and high into the atmosphere from the ground. So they have cannons, they have the planes, but they say the most effective way is the planes. Let's take a look at what uh, the independent says. Let me pull down this next article from the independent.co.uk. Independent.co.uk. And let me uh, share my screen again. All right, let's see if we can see this together. I'm pulling up some more receipts, TikTok. And whoever's AI robot runs the TikTok system and everything else, listening to every word I say, making judgments on every single word I say, keep listening and get some knowledge. Dubai is making its own fake rain to beat 122 degrees Fahrenheit heat. This is the reason why they want to make the fake rain, okay? So as you can see, I'm giving you guys the receipts. Now, let me close this video clip that you want to open. The monsoon-like downpour drenches a busy highway, causing tricky driving conditions for the stream of SUVs. Sudden waterfalls appear on the side of the road. It would be a common sight in parts of Southeast Asia, but this is the United Arab Emirates. In the height of a summer heat wave, which has seen temperatures regularly pass 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, that guess what, guys? That's normal for that area. I've been in Dubai. It's hot, man. If you didn't want to be in a hot place, go somewhere else. According to the UAE's National Center of Meteorology, 
the precip uh, precipitation was enhanced by cloud seeding operations to increase rainfall in the Gulf country. On Sunday, UAE's National Weather Service released video footage of the heavy downpours. Its cloud seeding operations are part of an ongoing mission to generate precipitation in the Middle East country, which has an average rainfall of just four inches, they say. But in another article, it says three. Another one says less than three. So which is it? The cloud seeding operations work through manned aircraft, through manned aircraft, firing chemicals such as silver iodide into the clouds in order to cause increased precipitation. That's what cloud seeding is. Again, I'm reading from independent.co.uk. The National reported the heavy rainfall caused waterfalls to appear in the city of Al Ain and made driving conditions hazardous. In an effort to curb the country's sinking water table, the UAE invested 15 million in nine different rain-making projects in 2017. So they've been trying to get this desert to fill up with water. Mm, kind of late to say, you know, we got to make a desert rain. It's a desert, man. I mean, you didn't have to build anything there. Could have built something somewhere else. He <laughs> decided to go to an inhospitable area to build a city. That's a beautiful city. I mean, but come on. Now you, now you, now you, now you got to play Frankenstein to try to keep everything going. Got to be Dr. Frankenstein. Check this out. The project is being led by researchers at the University of Reading, of Reading, in England. Professor Martin Ab uh, Ambaum, who worked on the project, told the BBC in March that the UAE has enough clouds to create conditions conducive to rain. Oh, yeah, you do. <laughs> we know that now. The project tries to get the water drops to merge and stick when they receive an electrical pulse. Remember I told you? They send drones up. After the clouds are seeded, they send drones up into the clouds and electrify them. Okay? So they create static electricity. When the drops merge and are big enough, they will fall as rain. And interesting, very, very interesting. So it's not me saying it. <clears throat> I'm not talking off the dome. I'm not making stuff up. I'm not giving you opinions. I'm just giving you the facts. So you can go and you can you can go sound like an educated person and talk to somebody about this. No, it's a, they see those clouds over there. They make it rain over there on a consistent basis well, or whatever they need it. And they pay people $3,000 per flight to do it. They have some private corporations and some government agencies doing the same thing. So they're working concurrently with government. Some are private. And that's right. They're messing with Mother Nature. That's what they're doing. All right. Now. Let's go to another one. New scientist. Let me pull this up. Let's get to the new scientist real quick. All right, it's up there on the screen. I'm giving you all the receipts here. This article is climate myths. Ice core shows CO2 increases lag behind temperature rises, disproving the link to global warming. Newscientist.com. Not BillyCarson.com newscientist.com the ice core data i talked about this years ago you've seen that reel or that clip or that TikTok go viral it went into the millions and millions of views on instagram the fact checkers came and deleted my or put a thing over my my video because i was talking about these ice core samples 
And what I was talking about with the ice core samples was that when you, let me, let me, let me take this cookie setting thing down. All right, there you go. Now you guys should be able to see all these records here, these graphs. What I'm showing on YouTube right now are charts. The ice cores have been collected for decades. When you take an ice core, you go down miles deep into the ice, usually the Antarctic ice. You go way, way down. And you send this drill down with this core, and you bring that core back up, and now you've got a record of what happened geologically on the planet going back in time. As far back as you went down, every so many feet, you're going back in time, sometimes hundreds of years, sometimes tens of thousands, and sometimes hundreds of thousands of years, depending on how deep the ice core sample is. What happened? Hmm. What, what happened? What happened? What happened? What happened is you discover all of a sudden something very interesting. These ice core samples actually have a record. And in this record, it shows you what's going on. It shows you cooling and warming periods on Earth. It shows you cooling and warming periods before the industrial age even existed. It shows you prior ice ages. It shows you the ending of the most recent ice age. You see? The most recent ice age. Pretty interesting. The most recent ice age was about 12,000 years ago. And so it shows you this data down to the accurate year almost. It shows you how the ice that covered most of the continents began to recede over the course of about 4,500 years, right? And uh, we got to get some cycles out of this live. I don't know. Hold on, hold on one second. Let me get a couple of these crazy people out of here. These people are absolute psychopaths. One second. Let me just get a couple of these crazy psychopaths out of here real quick. And so, and so what's interesting is these ice cores really, really tell you what's going on, right? And so if we're having normal cooling and normal heating periods of the planet, we discover it's a cycle. It's an absolute cycle, which is pretty interesting that we can go back in time. And when you go back in time, you discover something really crazy that this current warming period isn't even the warmest of warming periods that we've had. <laughs> There's been more, much more warmer periods than this particular global warming period. Going back thousands of years, you can see the cycle, right? And that's based on ice core data. That's not based on Billy Carson. That's not based on my hypothesis. That's not based on me just going off the dome and trying to get some views. That's going off of real science, peer reviewed science with data that's sitting in geological databases that says there are cycles that occur of cooling and warming and that there, another ice age eventually will return to this planet. Another ice age will return to this planet because it's why it's part of a cycle. Everything is cyclical on this planet, even in this universe. All right. Pretty crazy. And yes, I did say it was getting colder in Florida. Somebody had asked in the live chat over there. All right. So let me take the sharing screen now. Just some crazy stuff, man. I mean, pretty interesting topics. We got 4,465 people here in the live chat. All right, so thank you guys, everyone here for popping in and, and jumping on. Um, I'm we're talking about a very sensitive topic, a topic that requires me to use specific words, say things in a specific way, to read actual articles instead of just talking without showing you the sources, right? Every source has been stated because this topic is so sensitive that they don't want these kind of videos to be made at all. But 
we're just asking questions and we're just reading statements from mainstream sources and reading science data from mainstream sources so that we can come up with our own idea of what may or may not be happening. And right now, when I look up in the sky, or when I go outside and look up in the sky on a daily basis, something I hadn't seen before I'm starting to see in the skies above where I live. I'm starting to see a lot of the, uh, <laughs> let me give it this correct scientific name. I'm starting to see a lot of silver iodide. There's a lot of silver iodide in the, uh, in the atmosphere uh, where, I, where I live now. Every day I can see a lot of silver iodide in the sky. It's interesting that there are so, there's so much money for these projects, which makes a private corporation really want to go out there and seek these contracts. But no one sent me uh, a request to vote on whether I wanted to be subject to these particulates. No one sent me a questionnaire asking for my vote on whether or not I agreed to inhale these particular chemicals and particulates out of the atmosphere or have them rain down on my body or have them leach into my drinking water. I didn't receive anything. I'm going to ask you guys in the chat. I'm just asking. I'm just asking questions. If anybody in this chat get any kind of email, uh, any kind of questionnaire, did you get somebody knock on your door and say, hey, guys, uh, do you approve of me doing this over your house? I, I didn't get it. <laughs> I didn't get the I didn't get the notification. Maybe I missed it. It's possible that I missed it. So I'm just asking you guys, maybe somebody out there is an expert out here that knows more about this than me. Because I didn't get it. And let me tell you something. If I, They seeded the clouds, according to BBC News. Again, source, BBC News. They seeded the clouds Sunday. They seeded the clouds Monday. They claim they didn't do anything on Tuesday when the floods came. So the hypothesis that's being projected in the news is that the cloud seeding had nothing to do with this tornado and this flooding and all this devastation in Dubai. That's what they're saying. Had nothing to do with it. I can't really say what I want to say. But uh, let me just put it this way. Imagine I had a bucket outside of my house that didn't have any water in it. And I went on Sunday and I filled it with water. And then I went on Monday and I filled it with more water till it got to the rim. And then I didn't do anything on Tuesday, but it rained on Tuesday. <laughs> Would the bucket overflow? I'm just asking for a friend. I'm just asking... <laughs> I'm just asking questions. I mean, come on. They, they, they worked Sunday in the sky. They worked Monday in the sky. But they didn't do anything on Tuesday in the sky. Okay. I believe you. I, believe, I can believe that. But they, they're, what they believe is, they believe that, or what they want to get people to believe, is that the devastation and the millions, maybe billions of dollars of damage, it wasn't their fault because they didn't do anything on Tuesday, and that's when the storm came. <sighs> you know, we keep letting them do things to us. We just keep on doing it. And I'm just as guilty as everyone else on this live video. I am just as guilty for letting, allowing them to continue to do things. This is why I'm speaking up today. I'm just sick and tired of the foolishness, you know? There's people walking around with rashes. There are people walking around with autoimmune problems, like myself. There are people walking around with um, irritated eyes, coughing, sneezing, nausea, vomiting, headaches, 
migraines, all the things that are side effects of some of these particulates. And they keep going to the doctor and the doctor keeps telling them, oh, you know, take this prescription medication and come see me next week for another prescription medication. And now these people are becoming drug addicts. I was on prednisone for almost 10 years trying to solve this autoimmune uh, rash reaction. I was having to everything. And it's just devastating. And it just keeps coming. I never got a notification. Nobody asked me if I was interested in finding out about these geoengineering studies. Nobody came to my door and said, hey, I want to make you aware that on X day and X month, there's going to be some special things coming out of the back of a plane above your house. Do you consent to this? It didn't happen. It's my job now, once I see them, to go and start asking questions for me to start going and knocking on some do doors to figure out what's going on and for me to take to, uh, action to the next level, you know, and for all of us, really. We just we just can't continue to allow it to happen without our consent. That's all I'm saying. But that's what's going on. That's what's going on. We have uh, a lot of facts tonight, a lot of uh, receipts we read tonight. I gave you the sources. YouTube, you got the sources. I'm putting all the links to this stuff in the caption of this video as well. So when the fact checking app AI comes around, they can then uh, scan the link and go to that site. Everything I said was right in alignment. Everything was right in alignment. All right. Um, and, uh, you know, we just have to do more as a people. I think when we are put in a situation where there are things that are decisions are made to do things that we are not privy to or that we don't have a, a real quality say so in happening, we need to find a way to come together and and make our voices heard. You know, this is why I came up with the song, um, you know, Divide and Conquer. Uh, I hope everyone has had a chance to hear that song. It's on this, it's on this platform, Divide and Conquer. Um, I'd love to be able to play it right now, as a matter of fact, and, and, and stream it live during this video. You guys got to hear the words that we're saying in this song. It's, it's, it's important because I'm talking about unity. We're talking about not falling for the divide and conquer tactics. These divide and conquer tactics have kept human beings separated and divided for eons. And while we're fighting each other, they're laughing all the way to the freaking bank. And I mean laughing. I'm talking about a gut, deep gut belly wrench laughing. They're laughing as deep as the gut can go. They're chuckling at us. And they're going, man, these people are so damn gullible. They keep letting us put our boot on their neck as many times as we freaking want, and they'll never stand up for themselves and stop us. That's what's happening, in my personal opinion. And it's, uh, you know, it's just something that I'm just sick and tired of it, man. You know, at some point, we have to organize. The only thing that's stopping humanity from getting to the next level, literally, the only thing that's stopping us is our lack of ability to collaborate and work with one another. Everything is competition. I got to do better than him. I have to do better than her. You know, it's all competition. I need to look better than her. My boobs got to be bigger than hers. My butt got to be bigger than hers. He got a nicer car than me. I got to get a nicer car than him. His Instagram account's doing too good. I got to do better than his account. My YouTube account needs to be better than his account. It's this competition. Competition, no collaboration. The competition mindset has put this planet into a lack of abundance mindset. You don't believe there's enough abundance in any area to share with the universe. That's what that means. Whenever you feel like you've got to outdo somebody in some area of whatever it is, what you're saying is, 
you don't believe in abundance. You think there's a lack of it. And because you think there's a lack of abundance, guess what you manifest in your life? You manifest a lack of abundance. You bring it, you attract that same frequency back to yourself when you move with that mindset. When you understand that we're living in a universe that there is no lack, there is nothing but unlimited abundance in this universe. It's incalculable how much abundance exists. At every point, at every Planck unit in space-time is an unparalleled amount of energy that you have, you could tap into. When you come to that knowledge and that understanding, you begin to realize abundance is everywhere. There is no competition. I only compete with myself on a daily basis. Every single day, I compete against myself. What does that competition look like? What can I do to become better today than I was yesterday? And those micro movements, turn into macro changes. Micro movements, macro changes. That's what I'm competing against. My own self-growth, my own self-knowledge, my own ability to continue to grow consciously. I can care less what's going on. I cheer anybody on. I own Forbidden Knowledge TV, a streaming TV network on Apple TV, Roku, Amazon, Samsung TV, Google Play, or whatever, all these networks, right? And it's growing very, very fast. There's another competitor out there. Their name is Gaia, G-A-I-A. They have a streaming TV network, been around much longer than I've been around. Matter of fact, I'm on a lot of shows on their platform. I'm on tons of shows on Gaia. People, oh, you're gonna, you gotta, you're trying to beat Gaia. You're trying to be better than Gaia now, aren't you? I'm like, what? I'm not trying to be better. I'm trying to be better than me. I'm trying to improve myself and find a way to help the world. I'm not in competition with Gaia. I'm not in competition with them. I wish them the best. I wish that they get to three, four million subscribers on their on their platform. I'm still going to go get my two or three million on my platform. You see, I'm not in competition with them. I want them to become successful. See, my mindset is totally different. I don't see them as competition. I utilize my knowledge and information and, and my, uh, my observation of them to help me make better decisions. They, they gave me a shortcut. <laughs> they gave me a shortcut. Knowledge, the application of knowledge is power. Knowledge is not power. The application of knowledge is power. But they gave me a shortcut. So Gaia is a streaming TV platform. You can get on all the app stores. I wish them the best. And I thank them for giving me an opportunity to be on their platform and be on those shows. Now I have my own streaming TV network. Forbidden Knowledge TV. I'm not going at Gaia and attacking Gaia and saying bad things about Gaia, that brings me into a lack of abundance mindset. That means I'm telling the universe, I don't believe there's enough abundance for my company to even exist. I cheer them on, I want them to do great. I'm attracting my own abundance through no competition of any outside source. The competition mindset has destroyed this planet. It has destroyed us. Competition and capitalism in the wrong areas, misplaced capitalism, misplaced competition, destroyed us. Everyone wants to be better than everyone else. Everyone wants to, to the other guy to fall and fail. Look at the presidential election. How does a presidential election work? Do you think these guys come out and tell you all the good things that they're capable of doing and, and how they have a division of trying to help humanity? You'll never hear that come out of their mouth. What you will hear is 
Look at so-and-so. Look what so-and-so did. And look what so-and-so failed at. Look how he failed in this. Look how he failed in that. And look what so-and-so is doing wrong. And look what so-and-so messed up over here. And look what so-and-so is doing over here. They're pointing fingers nonstop and blaming somebody else for problems and talking bad about them. That's their campaign. Their campaign is to attack other people and put them down. Not to uplift humanity. Not to make people feel good about themselves. Not to find solutions to problems, to destroy our minds and get us angry at other people to the point where we would even kill if we had to for that belief system, for that particular, you know, Democrat Republican scam. There is no such thing as a Democrat or Republican. It doesn't exist. I'm gonna tell you again, there is no such thing as a Democrat or Republican. What does exist is in a group of elite oligarchs that torture men, women, and children worldwide. That exists. An elite group of oligarchs that torture men, women, and children worldwide, physically and mentally and financially. That exists. Democrat, Republican, that's an illusion. That's an absolute illusion. And what the worst is, the religious people that follow politics, they're double, they're in double danger. They're double dipping the dangerous road. Because their own book tells them, don't follow after idols. But who are the number one people in politics who follow it the, the strongest? Religious people. Religious people follow it the strongest. They'll kill for that for that poly trickster. They'll attack for that poly trickster. They'll lobby for that poly trickster. And then their own book tells them, don't chase after idols. <laughs> Remember, Moses came down from the mount, from the burning bush with the commandments and saw them making the golden calf. And then he killed every one of them because God told him to kill them all. They were going after the fake idols. And now... You can't stop them from going after these fake idols. You can't stop them now. <laughs> and you guys look like clowns out here. Anyway, <laughs> uh, we got a lot of growing up to do. Chasing after fake idols and poly tricksters. Divide and conquer tactics are working like you wouldn't believe right now. People destroying the atmosphere that we got to breathe in. Our babies got to breathe this stuff in. We got to get it on their skin. We got a lot of work to do. A lot of work to do. I want to play Divide and Conquer for real quick. And I want you guys to give me your opinion on this song. Divide and Conquer was written by Donnie Arcade, Annalise, and myself, Billy Carson, a.k.a. Forbidden Knowledge. The music was produced by Guerrilla Tech and myself. Uh, he remixed my original version, made it real nice. Um, and so it's uh, it's on uh, all music platforms. But the ultimate goal behind this is to get people start thinking, why am I the enemy of my brother? Why am I the enemy of my sister? Check it out. Divide and conquer. You want to divide and conquer. They want to divide and conquer. They want to divide and conquer. They want to divide and conquer. Yeah. They want to divide and conquer. United, we stand and never will fall. They want to divide and conquer. They want to divide and conquer. United, we stand and never will fall. They want to divide and conquer. Yeah. All right. You see it on the news. You see it on the media. Guess it's all real if it's on Wikipedia. Guess it's all real if you see it on Google. They out here playing chess and we out here playing Uno. All of these distractions, divide and conquer, break us up in fractions. Multiply the madness, this multiverse of madness. Questions I be asking, question marks turning into asterisks. If I can't get no answer, why keep asking? They keep us separated, no comparing notes. We think that we the G's, but they be living by the code. We just puppets on the string and they be pulling on the poor. They preparing for the war and we just thinking about the wars. Got me feeling post-apocalyptic It's just us against machines and the algorithms 
Got me feeling like oh gone Going through the galaxy for the spice like dawn They wanted to buy the conquer United we stand and never will fall They wanted to buy the conquer Divide and conquer. United we stand and never will fall. They wanna divide and conquer. How come they're so self-righteous? Divisiveness divides us. Speak words that bring us together. Divide and Conquer by Forbidden Knowledge, Donnie Arcade, and Elise. Shout out to Gorilla Tech on the remix. I appreciate you. Um, let me know what you guys think about the song. How do you, what do y'all think about the song over there? How do you, do you like it? If you like the song, let's just share it, play it. You can play the YouTube version. It's up on YouTube. It doesn't cost you any money. If you have Spotify or Apple Music, okay, you can share it to other people. We got to get the message out, man. The message has to be stop this. Uh, all this competition. Let's look for collaboration. Let's stop falling for the divide and conquer tactics. Is there racism out there? Yes. Is there division and divisiveness out there? Yes. Okay. We have to begin to see above that. We have to become solutions providers, solutions to problems. And we also have to always look to see how we can unify and how we can collaborate. We have to start seeing every single person as our potential enemy. We're hating people that we don't even freaking know. And it's dumb. It's stupid. And we also have to stop utilizing the victim mindset. I mean, at some point in time, we have to say, you know what? Let's work to create a better future for humanity. Does that mean that we're never going to run into a person that's full of hate? Does it mean that we're never going to run into another person that might be racist against us? Or a troll or a hater? No, it's going to happen. But you always have to remember, above all, from a mass perspective, the majority of people don't really have that mindset. You want proof? Go to my page, go to my social media account and take a look at my comments. 
I might have a post like the other day to hit 3.9 million or 4 million views. It might have 600 or 700 comments underneath it. Out of those six or 700 comments and all those likes, 60,000 likes, there might be five to eight people that had something negative to say. My mind is drawn towards the negative, right? Instantaneously, your mind is drawn towards the negative, instantaneously. Instantly. But look at the big picture. 66,000 people liked it. And about 600 people left a positive comment. And 3 million or 4 million people watched it. We're focusing on the small instead of focusing, focusing on the big picture. We're, 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 we're narrowing our vision of humanity to the to the dark brothers, the small group that are, you know, sticking us with a butter knife, instead of looking at the more grand picture. That doesn't mean you let everyone into your house and bring every, you know what I'm saying? You got we gotta be smart too, but at the same time, we have to give people an opportunity to show us who they are. And if there's an opportunity for collaboration, we need to have the ability to have the vision to see that and discern it, and then to capitalize on that. That's the kind of capitalistic society we need, capitalizing on collaboration opportunities with people that are like many individuals on the same frequency. That's where we need to be. And if we do that, we can change this planet. And it won't happen in a very long, drawn out time. It can happen fast. The hard part is getting people to stop competing against each other and stop hating one another and get them to start loving one another and seeing what they can do to push forward and raise the consciousness of humanity and our own agenda as the people on the planet, as 8 billion people. I think we're at 8.2 billion now. What do we want to push our agenda? Our agenda is peace and tranquility and happiness. We want to build a positive legacy for our future generations. We don't want to leave them in a tragedy legacy. We need to shift the narrative. We need to leave them with a better economic system. A better financial matrix needs to be forged. Because the one we have now, it's horrible. We need to leave them with a better educational system. We need to leave, to leave them with a system for rehabilitation, not prison. We can only do that if we actually come together. We got to stop thinking left wing, right wing. Both wings are on the same damn bird. He's a Pentecostal. He's a Baptist, and he's a, a he, he's a you know. Come on, stop it, stop it. Everyone is free to be who they are and what they are. The question is. Can you find a way to work together? Can you find a way to coexist? That's the question. That's the real challenge. Guys, don't forget we have the second annual Forbidden Conscious Awards coming up. Make sure you guys get your tickets. I'm dropping the link right here in the live chat. I'm going to, it's in the link, it's in my bio, TikTokers. All right. Make sure you, um, you you tap that link, um, and uh, appreciate all of you guys. Thank you so much. Also, by the way, I missed a few people who did drop some donations on YouTube. I couldn't get to all y'all because I was reading those articles and going through everything. But I appreciate every single one of you guys. Thank you so much. That money goes to communities and schools. We will go live from the communities and schools meeting in a few weeks in Detroit, Michigan where the money goes. We, we put that money in the hands of communities and schools who actually helps underprivileged children, homeless kids, kids who are suffering with nowhere to sleep in the winter, no coats, no jackets, no shoes. Need, need, they need mentors, they need uh, tutors. <clears throat> That's where the money goes that you guys donate. <clears throat> and every year, every year we're one of the uh, top sponsors at the event and we'll be there again this year. 
And we always usually show, uh, show a printout or take a photo with our phone and upload it or talk about it on, uh, on this YouTube account to show you where these donations actually go. We don't keep any of them. We actually add money to it and donate it to help kids. So thank you so much because you're helping people. You're helping kids, which are actually the future of the planet. All right. Uh, anyway, we appreciate y'all so much. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to uh, run this commercial for the Forbidden Conscious Awards. You got to come there, guys. It's going to be an amazing event. You don't want to miss this event. It's 2024. Sec hey, everyone. I'm Elizabeth Carson, and I'm thrilled to introduce to you an extraordinary weekend event happening right here in Miami, Florida on August 3rd and 4th. It's none other than the second annual Forbidden Conscious Awards weekend. After the tremendous success of last year's event with over 1,200 attendees from around the globe, we knew we had to make this year's event even more spectacular. On Saturday, we have a captivating conference lined up featuring world-renowned speakers such as Mohammed Ibrahim, Merkaba 13, Robert Grant, Billy Carson, and a woman's panel hosted by yours truly. Following the conference, we'll set sail for a VIP yacht cruise at sunset, where you'll have the chance to mingle with your favorite nominees and celebrity guests, all hosted by 19 Keys. Sunday, August 4th, kicks off with a Forbidden Knowledge book publishing signing event, followed by the highly anticipated second annual Forbidden Conscious Awards. This is a red carpet affair, so come dressed to impress. Remember last year, we surprised a lucky guest with an Audi A4 during the awards, and this year, we're upping the ante with a chance to win a Mercedes Benz. So make sure you secure your tickets early. This event is sure to sell out quickly. I cannot wait to see each and every one of you there for what promises to be an unforgettable weekend of education, inspiration, celebration, and glamour. All right. We want to see you there. That was my beautiful wife, Elizabeth Carson, on the vocals there. She got the great voice, and uh, she did a great, great job uh, on stage at the last uh, Conscious Awards, and I'm looking forward to seeing her on stage again this year, handing out those 10-pound crystal trophies. 10 pound crystal pyramids, incredible, all right? Clear, clear quartz crystal. It's an amazing event, a place to celebrate the raising of consciousness on the planet. It's in Miami, Florida, August 2nd, 3rd and 4th. August 2nd is the celebrity basketball game to raise money for kids. August uh, 3rd in the morning is a speaking conference. I'll be speaking, Robert Grant, Elizabeth Hoekstra, well, Elizabeth Carson now, I just gotta get used to saying that because we're married now. And also uh, Merkaba 13 uh, will be speaking as well. And then we have that evening, we have the cruise, a VIP yacht cruise selling out of Biscayne Bay for four hours with a great dinner and collaboration and entertainment. And then we're going to have on Sunday a book signing meet and greet uh, at the hotel. Uh, you'll come out, bring your books. I'll sign them for you. We'll take some pictures and so forth together. Sunday afternoon, red carpet from 3 to 4.30. Uh, come take pictures with me on the red carpet. All right. And then that evening, five o'clock starts the Forbidden Conscious Award. Some people are now calling it the Conscious Grammys because of how incredible it looked, how incredible it was. It was a high, 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 high level event. So I want to see you guys there. Thanks for spending time with me tonight. Again, make sure you click the like button. Make sure you subscribe. I'd appreciate every single one of you guys.